Uh, my name's John Karen Fernandez. I played with the group the Olivia Tremor Control and also with the group Circulatory System and also played with the groups Dreamboat, New Sound of Numbers, Super Cluster, Old Smokey, Jacob Morris, Lavender Holyfield, and much more. Um, I run the record label Cloud Recordings, and I've worked at the record store, Walk Street Records, since 1999. Solid. Um, well, my first question is more of a checkup question before we jump into too much. Um, my first question is really just, how are you doing, and how are you holding up? <laughs> in this uh, I'm here? doing okay. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Um, holding up okay. Yeah. Cool. That's good to hear. I definitely know when we talked briefly the last time um, about how you work at the, the record store, and I know that that's got to be a little hard right now. I have uh, connections to some people that work at one right now, and so it's a little hard not being able to see people in person. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is, yeah. The store was going so well, and then all of a sudden it all ground to a halt, so, yeah. Yeah, have you guys, uh, you guys, like, do stuff online to try to... Yeah, we we have a Discog store, and we've been selling some stuff on Discogs, but it just doesn't match the volume of what we do in a normal day, so... For sure. Have you, um, because of because uh, of that change, have you been finding that you're doing other stuff with that, that time now at all? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have been focusing on uh, some label work. I've got a new thing coming out on my record label, uh, a band my son actually plays with called Immaterial Possession. Um, and We've been getting stuff ready to release that. The release date for the physical release of the album has been pushed back because none of the record stores are open right now, but the digital release is still going to happen on July 24th. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, do you, uh, I forgot uh, if you mentioned it, do you play with your son's band or do you just help them out with the, the label? Uh, just help them out with the label and, and my son plays in the group. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. How long have uh, they been doing that? Uh, they've been together a couple of years now. They've done a couple of uh, U.S. tours and um, recorded this album last year, and uh, it's finally coming out now. So. Sweet. Um, besides, uh, besides helping him out, have you been doing anything uh, personal work at all? Or, um, a little bit. Um, just um, see, I was going to maybe do some uh live stream of like you know playing in my house, but see, I don't have an iPhone. I'm talking to you right now on a flip phone. Uh, I don't have an iPhone right now, so I'm not able to do that. But on my personal Facebook page, I've been sharing. Uh, some videos, some of the highest quality videos of um, different footage from when I played with Circulatory System and Olivia Tremor Control and Old Smokey and things like that. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. I, uh, yeah. I've been thinking, I, I want to, uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on, because um, I feel like a lot of, uh, at least people in the music community area type place right now online are like putting out a lot more live shows like that or like digging up stuff um i was wondering if you think that like this in a way is kind of bringing us closer together or if you feel like it's definitely no it's it's really nice uh like i it's it's definitely really nice where um some people that have expressed some interest in my music, I've seen them pop up with live videos of them playing and stuff. And it's neat to see, you know, people that have uh, checked out uh, my music uh, and things I've played with over the years. It's neat to see what they do as well. Uh, it makes, you know, when they 
I compliment our music and stuff. And I'm like, well, you're also an excellent musician, so that means even more. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 it definitely has brought us together. So, Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like um, uh, people are reaching out uh, more during this time of, like, you know, isolation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's neat. Um, I'm talking to friends a lot more on the phone and, uh, getting more contact with people online and my family has been even more than they were, you know, every Sunday we, um, do a group chat. I, I do it on my laptop and it's, it's really nice. Like it, it's kind of brought people even closer together, even though they're physically further apart. That's wonderful. Have you, um, do you feel at all like there, it's like, I don't know, this could be a little weird question, but, like, do you feel like even in this more connectivity that it feels just as genuine, or do you think that there's, like, a little bit of, like, in, it feels a little ingenuine or there's a little disconnect there? Uh, no, I feel it's pretty genuine. I feel it's pretty genuine. Yeah, yeah. Um it's it's neat just like taking a peek right in someone's bedroom and they're just like kind of off the cuff playing some songs like like they would if you know, they invited you in and and were like hey can I play a couple songs for you and you know it's like <laughs> it feels pretty sweet actually yeah my yeah. friend Julian um, that plays in the music tapes and played in Nutrimark Hotel he did a live stream from his little apartment in Tokyo. And it was just the sweetest thing. Like, he just, he was seeing the responses of people as they were coming in and responding to them and playing songs and doing little performances and stuff. And it was just the most beautiful thing. It really made me smile. That's awesome. Um, do you think that those little peeks into people's lives and this, like, live stream increase, like increases like audience participation as well like the way that you can interact with yeah 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 it it, it is it's really neat because e even during a show um someone's not going to interrupt your performance by suddenly clapping like right in the middle of the song but you could be playing a song and glance over and see you know you just hit something really neat and suddenly a flurry of hearts comes and stuff. It's really neat. It's really neat. Yeah. Do you, uh, how important do you think, uh, like, fans and participation is in, like, a performance? Oh, I, um, as someone who's played consistently over the years, even when some of the more popular groups that I've played with haven't um, been play active, uh, I, I continually play because I play a lot of solo shows and shows with my son and stuff. And it, it definitely, it's real important to me. I don't know how important it is to other people because I can't speak for other people, but it's real important to me to just keep getting out there. Uh, and sh shows range, you know, from when I played Aspest last year, this local festival. Um, there was a lot of people there, but then sometimes I'll play and there'll be just the other performers and stuff, but we're playing for each other and it feels like this movement and there's this connectivity, uh, and, um, it just feels like maybe like when you read in on Wikipedia and stuff about these artists where they're kind of exchanging ideas and influencing each other and um, creating these movements. It feels like that we're doing that in this modern age, you know, like um, where we get together and we put on a show and we're all supportive of each other and kind of encourage each other and influence each other and, uh, makes uh, it seem like it's ha everything's happening now. It's not just the stuff that you read about in the history books and whatnot. So. Yeah, that um, it. I I was um, 
doing some some like research on some of the albums that I really like, and it, it reminds me of how I think for one of the Olivia Tremor Control albums, um, I think you all had people send in tapes of their dreams. Is that? Yeah, and that stuff really got used on the albums. Like we put that um, out in uh, Dusky Cubus Castle, the first album, and then if you listen to the Color Squares EP, the Black Swan Network Olivia Tremor Control collaboration, um, you could hear some of those dream tapes on there as well as on Black Foliage. So yeah, yeah. Did um did those uh that participation in that, like, did that inspire the, like, what was the relationship between those and the creation of the, the music? Were they kind of symbiotic or? Um, well, uh, it was interesting to kind of hear what people, what their sub, what's floating around in people's subconsciouses and stuff. And it was just the recording quality of those was really interesting um, where people were do- sending in little micro cassettes and things like that. And some something about all these different voices and all their different subconsciousness, like chopping, you know, Will Hart spent a lot of time kind of chopping those all together and making these collages out of them. And it was kind of a dialogue with the people that were listening to our music, so that that was really interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was a little divergent. I'm just really curious if um, you've watched. I know. I think uh, there was a documentary about the Elephant Six. Um, yeah, yeah, I them. saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned out real well, real well. I'm real happy with that. Yeah, I definitely, um, for those that don't know, did you have to get the, go through the process of getting the VHS tape? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, some neighbors of mine got the VHS tape uh, in uh, and then lent it to me, and I actually have a VCR, um, and I watched it on that, and then it showed at a little uh, theater here in town as well. And so it was kind of neat seeing people's reactions while it was playing on the medium-sized screen, you know, <laughs> like what they were uh, laughing at and what they were uh, reacting to. It was really interesting. Yeah. Did you um, Did you talk to anybody after after that experience? Like yeah, yeah. Um, my friend Sao Yi, um, who is Chinese, but she lives in Germany right now. She was visiting Athens um, uh, right when we got it. She came over to my house and watched it, and she was just blown away. It was just so nice to see her because I lived all that stuff firsthand, but just see her perspective on it out of just, like, all that was new to her, uh, she it just really made me happy to see her just kind of get bowled over by it. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was there uh any elements of it that stuck out to you personally that you had lived through that you saw? Um well, of course I was really touched by how well, Bill was portrayed because I miss him so much. He was my Olivia Tremor Control bandmate that passed away of an aneurysm. Um, mm-hmm. It it was just so nice to see his legacy be honored so well. Um, just because you know you you love your friend and you don't want him to be forgotten about, and it's nice to see him portrayed so well. Yeah, and. Uh, because that was so, that came out so recently, do you think that there will be, uh, I don't know, things in the future, more videos or, or music? That well, I hope contributed? that documentary um, gets a wider circulation. I, I hope that they just started out by doing it this real uh, underground kind of way, but that it eventually is streaming on like Netflix and stuff. That would be really neat. 
Yeah, definitely. I don't know how that that transition would work, but I hope I hope so as well because I haven't been able to go through the VHS process. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I was also um, curious about um, something that was said about how when the band got back together in 2009 or around 2009. Oh um, uh, yeah, well we got together first in 2005 and then again in 2009. Um yeah, uh we um just had taken a we the band never really broke up. We just kind of took a break where we were all going to focus on different things for a little while and then we just decided to get back together and I remember Bill my my bandmate that passed away my friend and bandmate that passed away uh he said he had you know tried playing with other people but there was this certain dynamic and this certain magic about when all five of us were there um that he could never attain playing with other people and I agreed and everyone agreed there was just this certain thing about all five of us being in a room and creating together and bouncing ideas around that was never quite reached with the other things we were working on. We we might have done something different and just as interesting to some people, but there was just something about that dynamic of being with each other that was just really great to revisit and we got a chance to reconnect and everything. So Yeah. I um there's an interview I was reading. Um, I forget which member, I think it was I think it was Will had mentioned a similar magic about playing together so much so that he, he didn't really want the songs to be released. Like he just wanted everything to to stay um kind of private in that um Oh yeah. Well um we're still deciding what what to do with that stuff that we recorded. Um, we have worked on it some, but it's been a real slow process. It just getting everyone together at the same time. We're working with Robert Schneider, who's now he he's from the Apples, and we worked with him on our previous records. Um, and he is now a doctor of mathematics and teaches at the University of Georgia here in town. So he's always really busy and um, just everyone has so many things going on in their lives. It's so hard to kind of coordinate everything to get together with everyone to actually finish that stuff. But it is really close to being done. Like I'll play it for people and they're like, wow, this is, you know, some of the best stuff y'all have ever done and stuff. So. Oh, that's, that's so exciting. So you think that it would be released? In the recent, in like the current upcoming future, or maybe a little longer down the line. Well, it's so hard to say. It's really hard to say. You know, it just depends on when we could get everyone together to actually um, finish it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I imagine that you are busy as well. I don't know um, how how your work with cloud recordings have been going currently, if you want to talk about any. any oh, things. yeah. Um, well, uh, it's been kind of, uh, I've, I've sent out a couple of mail orders recently and stuff like that. And um, since people aren't able to physically shop at record stores anymore, I have seen an increase of people ordering uh, albums and CDs and uh, cassettes. Um, so that's been nice. Uh, it's nice to like send them a, a personalized package. You know, it goes from your living room to theirs, and it's so neat thinking of them opening the package and putting it on the turntable or the cassette player or the CD player in their home. And um, I have. I guess uh, this um, immaterial possession record that's coming out is the first vinyl that's come out in a while. I had been kind of putting out cassettes, 
by some of my pe- favorite people that I've played with around town, my friend Jacob Sunderland and my friend Ariel Ackerley. And, um, yeah. That's that. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, no, uh, just that I'm just glad that my friend Ariel, she hadn't ever released anything. She had played a ton of shows, and we had played a ton of shows together and everything. And I wanted to be able to put on her music in my own home, but she didn't have anything out there. And so I helped her record in my living room uh, some stuff, and then I put it out on cassette. And um, even though it wasn't a thing to like make a bunch of money or anything like that at least now i'm able to put on her music in my uh home and and hopefully other people will pick it up and put it on their homes as well so it's just good it's it's call recordings has always been more about spreading the joy than making a lot of money because as you know i've worked in a record store for like more than 20 years now and so call recordings is always been about um, just spreading the music I love more than making a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you think um, being in in that environment and you know keeping in contact with other artists fuels uh, any like personal creativity or personal like? Creativity? Yeah, yeah, for for sure, for sure. Um, and, uh, it's, it's kind of neat because, uh, you're inspired by everything you ever come in contact with and, um, by kind of reaching out there and going to see shows and helping people put out things, it's definitely helped me kind of blossom as a musician as well. Yeah. Do you think that the community that you know, you visit and visit to you uh, just kind of enhances the general, like, love and uh, passion for music at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's good to keep the love of music alive because it's so easy in this day and age to get caught up in all these things that uh, – kind of affect us negatively like just reading about our horrible president every day and whatnot you could, it could really wear you down where you're just like what is the point of all this but then you put on a good piece of music or look at a good piece of art and just it can really seep in like sometimes I I think that I'm more affected by music and art than most people like when I put on something, it like colors my whole world. There's this group called Woo. Well, I'll put them on on headphones and go walking around, and just everything seems beautiful while I'm listening to that music. It's just the most peaceful, um, playful kind of music, and it really does kind of color your whole world for a while. So, yeah, yeah. And no, I, I agree, and I've been missing the in-person aspect of it right now because I think that yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I like to imagine. I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, but I like to imagine that like once this kind of passes, whenever that may be, I feel like I don't know. I hope that there's like a push or like explosion. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. people are going to come with with some new talents and a new zeal for uh, being together and celebrating sound, and it's, it's, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of anybody planning anything for that. I've definitely um, heard some people planning, you know, for a hypothetical future. Um, yeah. Yeah, as far as, you know. Yeah, I haven't heard of any specific plans, but I know everyone's antsy already, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, with that, like, antsiness, do you uh, hope to be, like, making anything or, like, I don't know, hope to get anything out of uh, 
need in isolation for you know this month or two or three. Maybe people haven't spent as much time with themselves as they have in the past because they're always you know going out and doing things and whatnot. Hopefully there'll be some personal growth all around, and hopefully for myself as well. So.